Hey, so here we are and you've um, done three pre-writings and now it's time to start thinking about taking this stuff and putting it together in an essay. So here's some tips on that. Um, so your first pre-writing was exploring the details of your topic. You've developed a narrative to support your point and you've examined why your object's important. Now you've got to decide how they all come together. Now you have some different options. So you could start with just chronological narrative. So really what you're doing there is you're putting in the, let's see, I moved myself over. What you're doing there is you put in the story just in the order from the start to the finish and then say, here's what this means. And it's the simplest approach. So it's really kind of how we wrote it, pre-writing one, is just to get ideas, but pre-writing two and three is just putting those together and smoothing that all out, you know. Um, and so there are a couple of here, these are just examples. There's of course a bunch of examples, so they all do one of these or something similar or something different. Um, these are a couple of the essays that do that, The Sound of My Rose and Threads of Sunshine. They both basically do that. Another way you can do this is you can start the narrative at the middle or the end. So just like Poppy Weddle, it really starts kind of the end, right? Because it starts at his funeral and then Reuben goes back to when he was a kid, right? So he starts at the middle of the end, then he goes back to when he's a kid and then throughout there, there's kind of these points of what does Poppy Weddle really mean to him? You know, how this is significant for him. And so that one kind of goes back and forth. Connecting with history does that as well, where it starts in the moment of going to the anniversary, um, to the, you know, renewal of vows and the, the grandparents' wedding anniversary. And then it goes back to everybody getting dressed and then back even before that, and then comes back to, you know, his grandparents taking their vows in the church. So you can see that what they're doing is they're playing with, the narrative and the significance. They're kind of interweaving them. And you don't have to start at the very beginning of your story. As long as it makes sense to your readers, people will go along with it, okay? Um, and then another way to do it is, which is actually similar, really, what's happened a lot in both of these, is that going back and forth. And in Seasoning a Bond, this um, essay, Debbie does a great job of going, she starts in the present and she's in the moment and then she starts doing this stuff and she goes back to her childhood and something interrupts her and she, you know, is out of her, you know, headspace, her daydream of the past and then she goes back to it and she thinks about what it means and then back to the present. She gets interrupted, right, and back and forth. So she does a kind of back and forth thing. Um, these aren't the only options. These are just a few. I just want you to think at this point what you need to do is sit down and look at what you have for pre-writing two and three. You may find parts that you're like, I don't like that. I want to get rid of that. You can, right? What else do you want to put there? You may look at it and say, okay, this is great, but I forgot this stuff and that's where you want to add it in. And then you've just got to figure out how you want it to come together. Do you want it like this? Do you want it like this? Do you want it like this, like what are you doing with it, right? And, you know, look at some of the samples, how they do it. Think about what you like in terms of the way movies work, in terms of the way other stories work. You know, do you like to just kind of be dropped in and you don't really know what's happening until the story moves on and maybe they do some flashback or, you know, um, different things that help you kind of center. Think about that. Try it. You're turning in a draft to me. I'm going to give you feedback on it. Right? And if it doesn't work, the only way for you to know if it works is you try it and then your reader says, yeah, that's cool, or, huh? Right? And so, you know, I mean, the worst that could happen is I'd be like, huh, I don't quite get it, right? you got to make this clear or maybe it'd be better if you organize this way. Um, but so think about how it is you want to really organize it. Um, and that's going to be key. There's some other things to think about as well. For example, how will it communicate with your audience? How will it affect them as they read it? And what kind of impression does it create? So in terms of how will it communicate with your audience, 
we're really talking about a general audience here. So, you know, I mean, just like something anybody could read. So it, we don't want this too formal. This is not a form, formal essay. You don't want it too informal, right? I mean, if you have parts where people are talking very informal, we speak generally in not good wording. <laughs> so we wouldn't write the way you can write the way you speak and you really should for the most part depending who you're speaking to right i might not write the way i speak to my friends or my family there might be too many inside jokes things you might not get we're probably less formal with them um so you just it depends right but you've got to think about you know in kind of in terms of just kind of a general audience how would i write this how will it affect them as they read it so what kind of emotions do you want to bring up? Do you want them to have a few moments of confusion because you're getting across a part that you're confused, right? And then you explain it, um, that kind of thing. And what kind of impression does it create? And this is the grammar, right? So the example I like to give with grammar is static on the radio. You all know radio, right? Turn on the car radio. Um, anything, even visually, right? If something's not real clear, if it's blurry, um, how much will you tolerate that? Does just a little bit of that bug you and make you crazy? Some people can't stand it. They're like, oh, that sounds bad that I just can't, I can't focus, right? Um, and they'll shut it off. And those are the people who really, they're not the same people, but I'm saying as readers, the analogy is that, you know, some people with grammar, they have a little bit of grammar stuff and they're like, no, that's it, right? Um, some people tolerate a little bit more, a little more static on the radio if they love the song, if they're watching something they really like visually, tolerate a little more blur or something maybe not quite as clear, you know, and so that's kind of middle grammar. And then some people will love the song that's sing, like the thing they see so much that they'll just stick with it, even if they have to squint or they have to listen hard you know, they'll be there with it. That's your English teacher. Your grammar's really bad. I'm going to help you. I'm going to try to listen to that song you're seeing. See that image you're painting for me in front of my eyes. Even if it's blurry, even if I have a hard time hearing it, I'm going to work hard to do that to help you make it better so other people can get it clearly. Um, and, you know, that's, that's one of the key things. So sometimes in dialogue, when people are saying things, yeah, you may have some bad grammar because we don't speak in perfect grammar. Excellent, right? Um, but you want to work on the rest of it to be that general audience. So you want it nice and smooth, that kind of thing. We're working on that. Um, and so that's kind of how once you put together a draft and you decide how you're going to organize it, then you've got to say, wait, let me try to read it like somebody who's not me. Let me try to hear it from that other perspective, see it from somebody else's shoes, right? So that's the key thing there is, is you want to just kind of walk away and see if you can do that. And of course, that's why you always need another reader because we can never get outside of ourselves. We are surrounded by our own experience. And, you know, while we can be empathetic to others and we should do the best to connect with other people, it still is, you know... It, it, our writing is always what we had in our head, what we had in our heart. And so you have to really work, like step away, go take a walk, you know, pet the dog, whatever you do, you know, for a little bit and come back to it and then reread it and really try to kind of get a feel for what would it be like if this wasn't my writing, if it was something I was reading. So that's, um, you know, a kind of tip there. And then... Um, so what do you need to do? Review the grading criteria in the essay assignment before you begin your draft. And then, but most importantly afterwards, um, when we go to, whoops, let's find it. I'm uploading all sorts of videos today. Kelly.ninja and the emblematic object. And we look at the assignment and of course it's on your schedule. On the very last page, let's go down here, final grading. Drafting, right? Reread this, okay? Um, and then, you know, take a look at this because this is what I'm grading it on. 
I don't just grade it on do I like your shoes or not, right? No, I'm grading it on those things. So make sure and read through those once you kind of get it all together. First, just get your ideas there, and then you start shaping it. You're pre-writing your ideas. We've gone in the kitchen, we're going to cook a meal, you've got all the ingredients out, and now you just got to cook, okay? So that's your draft, you cook it up, and then you got to put it on the plate and make it pretty and serve it, and that's the look at the criteria. I've told you in this, that um, in the assignment here, this is what I'm grading on, so it's not a mystery, okay? I'm grading on these things. You need to ask, hey, is my essay doing this? As you get toward that draft, is it in proper MLA format? Well, of course, turn it in on time, right? Is it three pages? Now you're turning in a draft, so you may not be all the way done, but you should have, if you have done thoughtfully, you're pre-writing one and pre-writing two, you should have a substantial draft, especially once you kind of put those together and, you know, make them flow better, add in some other ideas. Um, so look through this as you're finishing up and ask yourself these things. But remember, I'm going to look at your draft and give you feedback and help you with, wait, those things too, okay? So before you get the final grade on this, you get one more. If you do it, you get a hundred kind of pre-writing grade, which is your um, draft. And then I give you that feedback and then you do say, okay, let me make this totally the final one. I'm going to get the big grade on it. Okay, um, so that's where that is. And then, um, other than that, the only thing I have is these final reminders here. Okay, so first and foremost, one of my favorite quotes, remember, you don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. And you've already started. You've got your pre-writings. So you're not starting with nothing. Start from those and then just decide where you're going to go and then just, you know, trust the process of what we'll do where we share some with each other, you share with me, you get feedback, and then you get to finalize it all. So, um, there you go. That's the overview for um, the final, final-ish, right? Working toward that final step here. Let me know if you have questions. Most importantly, just try. Just do it, throw it at me, and then that way you make me work. This is the song and dance, right? Um, give me work to do, and then, you know, and I'll help you out. Cool beans? All right. Take care. Keep on keeping on.